Hey people, since you clicked this video, I assume you're currently designing some new characters, or maybe you're redesigning some old ones. Either way, you're in luck, because for the past 1460 hours, I've been completely obsessed with it. I'm not really sure why, maybe it's because I'm currently designing characters for a new story, or maybe it's because I've been feeling like this lately. There he is! Hideous. He makes me sick just looking at him. Those big, bulgy eyes, that square body, those two buck teeth, and that stupid tie! <clears throat> As SpongeBob quickly figured out, character design is challenging. Whether you're trying to design an OC that represents yourself, a character for a comic, or even a character for an animation, well, it's... it's all hard. It's just difficult. And while I've never been the poster child for character designs, and I'm still technically in training, and I probably will be until I die, there are things I've learned that drastically help my designs. Disclaimer, the methods I mentioned in this video work really well for me personally. If they work for you too, great! If they don't, well, you probably shouldn't have listened to me in the first place. I mean, what do I know? This one's gonna be long, so let's get started. Let's start this off with a question. What do you guys think comes first? The character's look, or their personality, backstory, bio, etc.? Honestly, the correct answer just depends on your preference. But since we're talking about what works for me, I place my vote on creating their characteristics first. Personally, if I start with the design and just start drawing without any rhyme or reason, things never seem to end well. The design just falls flat. But I've noticed that when I have an idea of the character's wants, dreams, desires, needs, hobbies, personality traits, backstory, whatever, the design basically creates itself. Maybe that's just me. But for those that have an understanding of story and writing, you may connect this to the age-old writing method. Write great characters, and they'll write the story for you. This is kind of the same thing, but with design. It's like I'm having a conversation with someone about what they're going to wear today, how they're planning on styling their hair, and what their favorite color is. All these things are directly related to how they look, and in turn the design elements actually say something about the character. I'm not just throwing in an earring, a hairstyle, or a shirt just for the sake of making the character look interesting. I've done this before, and they look over-designed just for the sake of design. Granted, you can still make this work if you want. Maybe they have an earring because they love to accessorize, or maybe their grandmother gave it to them. Their hairstyle is always pulled back because they can't stand it when hair gets in their face, and they like going to concerts, so that explains the shirt. It's possible to pull a deeper character out of the design, is, is what I'm trying to say. And a lot of character designers do this, but personally, I always end up with a mess of visual features and they don't ever really say anything, and I'm always second guessing my design choices. So if you're like me, flip the steps on their head and learn more about your character before ever picking up a pencil. Let's chat about shape language next. And if you don't know what that means, just stick around, I'll explain it, I promise. When I think of good shape language for character design, I instantly think of Cruella de Vil. And I'm not talking about the new movie that came out this year. I'm talking about the animated 101 Dalmatians movie that came out in 1961. Cruella is this selfish, puppy-murdering fashionista, and she takes what she wants, and she does not lose sleep over it. Her design complements every aspect of her so well, just through shapes. She's pointy, rigid, you probably don't want to cuddle with her. Her shape gives you a decent idea of who she is as a person, but while they do shape language really well with Cruella in this movie, I absolutely love it when characters go against their own shape language too. Like in The Little Mermaid. The antagonist of that movie was Ursula, an octopus lady that yearned for power and revenge against Ariel's dad. But her shape language was perfect for her, because to Ariel, she came off as this sweet lady that helps people when they lose their way. Her body consists of big circles and soft edges. She was designed to fool Ariel into trusting her. She's basically a wolf in sheep's clothing. Okay, enough of me nerding out over Disney shape language. When I first walked down this path of shapes playing a huge part in character design, I had questions like, how can you utilize shapes to bring out qualities in your own character? Which shapes should you use? 
Thanks to Disney's shape language tactics and other animated media, we're preconditioned to making certain first impressions based on their shape alone, and each shape is jam-packed with different meanings. Luckily, there are only three, so I made a little chart and I'm super proud of it. Circles are soft, united, organic, cute, and welcoming. Squares are stable, strong, balanced, and grounded. And triangles portray movement, direction, harmony, and purpose. But where do you put the damn things? How do you use them? To be honest, it's really all about subtlety. Unless, you know, you're going for Phineas and Ferb or something, which has zero subtlety. It's not bad, it's just a style preference. So do it if you like it. Back to the best ways to use shape. Say you have a grounded and trustworthy character. Try using a square shape for his face or his body to make him appear sturdy and strong. You don't have to use squares everywhere, but you can use the shape in certain areas and still have the same effect. You can also do what the Little Mermaid did and use circles for an untrustworthy character if you're trying to portray deceit of some sort. A lot of triangular characters are ambitious or have purpose, and a good example of this are the superheroes you see with the wide chest and the skinny waist. Or you can flip it upside down, give them a squarish head and a pointed chin. Since we're neck deep into character design, I feel compelled to bring this up. I have to admit that I don't do this every time I'm designing a new character, though if I did, my characters would probably turn out better. Say you have a character design you're starting to like, but there's something about it you're just not a fan of. If you're like me, you may be focusing too much on the details. Try stepping back and looking at only the outline. You can do this by filling your character in with black and just looking at the silhouette. Pro tip, don't do this on your sketch layer. Make a new layer, don't ruin your original lines. If you can make your character recognizable like this, you're doing something right. For example, who's this? How about this? Can you tell who that is? You probably can. Back to the drawing. Say your silhouette isn't that distinguishable. A quick way to make it easier to recognize is to push the silhouette to the extremes. What I mean by this is if you have a bigger character, make their stomach stick out more. If you have a character with a lot of hair, make their hair bigger. Does your character wear a hat or a bow? Make the shape more distinct so it's more obvious and silhouette. Don't worry about what this will do to your details just yet. Make small feet even smaller, big hands even bigger, and sharpen out your lines on anything that doesn't make sense on first glance. When you're finished, make the silhouette semi-transparent and see how different the outline is from your original sketch. This is gonna look funky, but bear with me. Create a new layer on top of the two transparent sketches and redraw your character to fit the outline of your new silhouette. When you're finished, turn the silhouette layer off and move your second sketch to stand next to your original sketch. Which one do you like more? Which one do you think is more dynamic? I'll leave that up to you. Colors are hard. Knowing which colors to use and why and where and how much of each stresses me out like no other part of the creative process. I just have so many personal problems with it. So to make things easier, I typically break the process down into three simple things to consider in order from least important to most important. Number one, symbolism. What colors mean and how they are portrayed to the audience is, in my opinion, the least important thing to consider. There are so many characters that follow these cultural rules, and if used to the extreme, it feels really insensitive. I'm talking about the overuse of black on evil characters, white or light colors on the good guys, pink for girls, blue for boys, and so on. If you want to use these colors to portray any of these meanings, you definitely can, but personally it feels really overdone. So when I see a big beefy guy wearing a pink shirt or a main protagonist sporting their all black outfit, it's just more interesting. But of course these choices can still be daunting, which leads me to my second point. Number two, character's choice. Ask your character what they want to wear. I know this sounds really dumb, but it's so important. I can't stress it enough. Like I mentioned earlier, if you already have a character with wants, needs, desires, so on and so forth, they probably have some kind of idea of what colors they already like. A perfect example of this is this guy. He loves superheroes, so he's probably going to wear clothes that represent that. Probably some red, yellow, and blue colors, like Superman. Or maybe you're drawing a businessman character. He'd probably wear more natural toned or neutral colors to maintain his professional appearance. Number three, combinations. Mixing and matching multiple colors is another level of difficult. In a past life, I would open up my little color picker, select a blue I thought was pretty, and then rinse and repeat until I produced green and purple wolves that made no sense whatsoever. 
and when a character had more than one color, it was a disaster, almost every single time. So if you're picking out colors for one character or a group of characters, it may be best to try out a color palette tool. Coolers.co works really well, and you can even create a palette from pictures you like. You just go to their website and click Start Generator, then you can hit the spacebar on your keyboard to generate a new palette. When you see a color you want to use, just walk it, and then keep hitting the spacebar until you have five colors you're really digging. And keep in mind that it's fine to have one outlandish color, like a bright orange or a neon green, but it usually looks better when you keep these colors to a minimum and use them as highlights to keep things more grounded. That said, I wouldn't recommend manually picking out colors you think work well together. When I do that, they almost never look good. Maybe I'm just colorblind, I don't know. Either way, using a generator is worth trying out at least once. Every time I use a generator, my colors work together a lot better, so give it a try and let me know what you think in the comments below. But TK, I've tried all of this stuff, and my characters still look like carbon copies of other characters I didn't design. Never fear, random character designer. I don't have a foolproof way to save you from this, but there are some things you can try. Maybe you could just- Hey, don't interrupt. Rude. Do you guys remember my animatic, the boy, the wolf, and the monster? Yeah, well, I realized far too late that the human characters look painfully similar to Aaron and Armin from Attack on Titan. This was not intentional, but when designing the characters, I subconsciously gave them similar features. Obviously, this isn't an ideal situation, especially after redrawing them a thousand times. So how do you avoid this? Well, it isn't always possible to 100% avoid this. Sometimes you're going to have to trash your design and start over. Or at the very least, tweak it when you notice the similarities. But I do have a method that might save you some time. And fun fact, this method works for nearly anything creative, like writing stories, animating scenes, creating backgrounds, and yeah, designing characters too. So grab a sheet of paper, and I'll open up a Word doc and we can do this together. Write character design at the top, for no other reason than my own OCD, because I have to label everything, and then list out the design traits we've talked about so far. Number one, features, like clothes, accessories, scars, tattoos. Number two, silhouette. Number three, shape. Number four, color. And then add one more. Number five, line value. Which is a fancy way of saying how thick the character's line art is. Trust me, it makes a difference in your design. Even though this is probably more related to your art style, it's still really important to consider. Now, think about the character you want to design. Have an idea of their personality and character traits in your mind. And if you're like me, quickly jot down a character summary on your paper. Underneath that, make a list of characters you like that somewhat resembles your character's personality. This can be characters from movies, TV shows, and even books, as long as they have a visual design already. You can stop at five, or you can add as many as you like. For my example, I added eight. Next to each character, match the list of values you wrote above. Try your best to use each value, so if you only have five characters, only use them once, but if you have more than five characters, make sure each value is used at least once. Don't leave out color or something and have two line values. Now from your list, pick out five characters with all different values and slap them onto a rough sheet of some sort. Grab a pencil and start sketching the character while implementing the values for the five characters you picked out. For me, I'm using the silhouette of Taiga, the features of Chell, the line value of Shigo, the color of Princess Mononoke, and the shape of Toph. One thing to keep in mind, I'm not using the exact values from each character, just the idea. For example, Taiga has big, messy hair, which highly affects her silhouette. This goes perfectly with my rebellious little chick who refuses to brush her hair most mornings and will give her a defining shape at the same time. And no, I'm not copy-pasting her hair, I'm just using it as inspiration to create my own silhouette. Next up was implementing Toph's shape. Toph, to me, is a bit complex, but she also has a lot of square shapes in her body and her face, which makes sense since she's grounded and she's strong. Moving on to the features of Chell. She just has these stylish clothes and accessories and I'm in love with it. Obviously, I needed to give my girl a more modern look since this isn't some ancient city. So the cloth Chell was using as a skirt is getting converted into a jacket loosely tied around my new girl's waist in a similar fashion. I also converted her bracelet into a scrunchie so I could keep that big jewelry feel while making it fit into my girl's world a little better. Now that we have a basic idea of the character, I'm coming in and cleaning things up with Shiko's line art. The Kim Possible line art style is medium thick and it has an extra smooth flow, almost like vector lines. So I made sure my pencil was on the extra smooth setting and really expressed this feeling in her hair. 
Last up is the color, which I derived from Princess Mononoke, and this is the only value I completely 100% stole off of the character. The other values were simply inspired and changed up, but this one, yeah, I stole that. However, if you look at Princess Mononoke and the new character side by side, you can't really tell since I've changed the amounts of reds and browns that I used. It's the same color palette, but it's used in a really different way. That being said, you can always use a color generator to generate colors that are similar to the character you have for this value. Last thing, before you jump over to the comments and yell at me for stealing some elements of designs, I want you to keep in mind that nothing is unique. This goes for stories too, and that doesn't ever make it okay to steal another's character or art style, but a great artist knows how to gather inspiration from multiple sources and then create something new from that. After all, there are only three base shapes and only a few different line values, and there's only so many colors to choose from. So. How can you really make anything unique when these aspects have been used in thousands of characters already? The answer is simple, by combining your favorites of each in a way that only you can combine them. That's how artists, character designers, and authors have been creating unique content for years. Are you trying to create multiple characters, but they look way too similar to each other? Or maybe they look totally different, like there's no way they would live on the same planet. If you have either of these problems, it may be beneficial to slap all of them into a character lineup sheet. When you look at the characters next to each other, it's easier to see how they vary in height, size, shape, line value, and color. From there, you can sketch new ideas to make them all fit together better. Maybe this one needs a differently shaped nose, or that one should have a purple color palette instead of blue to differentiate them a little more. Maybe all of them are tall and skinny. A quick fix for that is varying their shapes and heights. Not all people look the same, so differentiating your character designs may make them feel more authentic and unique. Also, this is the perfect setting to view the colors of your characters and how they all look together. In my lineup, I added only their base colors so I could easily compare them without getting overloaded by all the other colors in their design. The base colors should also work really well together, and in my example, they just don't. But out of all of these colors, I would say the dark blue is my favorite, so I copied that color's hex code and pasted it into my generator. Then I flipped through different colors until I had a new palette with red, green, yellow, and pink. Comparing the before and afters of these selections, you can see how the second set just feels better. From there, I need to create new color palettes for each character since we're working with different color values, and then I can color these as usual. Color aside, there is one more thing you can test out in this stage. Most people tend to fall into a beauty trap when creating their characters, and what I mean by that is they allow beauty standards to limit their creative choices. I'm not saying make your characters ugly on purpose, but not everyone has to look like a model with perfect hair and a clear complexion. I do have one more method for this if the character lineup sheet isn't working for you. Instead, try sketching your characters interacting with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. Try to include their mood or emotion while they're talking to each other so you can see their dynamic. Even if characters look really similar or really different, the look and feel of the dynamic could be the saving grace of your ensemble. It's also easier to see what they would actually look like in the story, and this alone will make a lot of problems rise to the surface that you can fix. More often than not, this exercise makes me adjust something about the characters, so it's definitely worth giving a try if something's wrong with the designs, but you can't quite put your finger on what it is. That being said, it isn't necessarily a bad thing if they all look super different or super similar, if that's what you're going for. Do what's best for your story. Great, you designed a Dalmatian with exactly 203 spots, 30 of which are heart-shaped, and his tail is dipped in black like some amazing ice cream cone. Wonderful. Now draw him 500 times in a 40 second animation at 12 frames per second of him doing something cute and showing off his personality. I'll be back in two years to see if you did it. Don't do this to yourself. Seriously. If your plan from the beginning was to animate your character in a show or a movie, do what you can to simplify the design without getting rid of the impression your character is making on the audience. Granted, there are plenty of animated works with complicated character designs, especially in anime, but most times you can make the same impact with your character and your story with or without a complex design. Not to mention some of the best designs are simple. Don't throw rocks at me, this is just my opinion. That being said, I'm fully aware that not everyone is an animator. Maybe you just want to draw an original character for your profile picture, or maybe you want a complex looking character for your graphic novel. And if that's the case, then by all means, go nuts! 
Just keep in mind that a complex character doesn't always mean it has a superior design to a simple character. If your audience can't even tell what something is on your character because you have thousands of moving pieces, it might be best to tone it down and emphasize the really important bits that make your character, well, the badass they are. And that's all I've got for now, my lovelies. If you have any questions about character design, be sure to leave a comment and I'll do what I can to help you out. If you want to be involved with a group of artists just like you, check out our Discord where we share art, talk about ways to improve it, and meet like-minded people. Link to join is in the description. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button so we can appease the algorithm gods. It really does help me out a lot. And be sure to subscribe if you want to check out all my future videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching guys, and happy drawing!